let's get this out the way right now. We are talking about travel, traveling somewhere else. It is not travel if you go to a different state. You took a trip, you didn't travel. things to get out the way I look nuts but I had to take my hair down because I have to show you that I fixed the purple but I have to fly through this because I haven't finished editing the video that I'm already late on that has to go up before this otherwise you're not gonna know what I'm talking about in terms of fixing the purple sorry I'm a little frazzled it's been a while number one Number two, this is my lunch hour from work. So I'm trying to do this as fast as possible. Anyway, so by the title, you can tell we're gonna talk about travel. Let's get this out the way right now. We are talking about travel, not going to a different state within the US, not going to a different part of your country if you're somewhere else in the world travel leaving your country traveling somewhere else it is not travel if you go to a different state you took a trip you didn't travel anyway so i've been on my fair share of <laughs> travels <laughs> i've been on a fair share of planes i have gone on a fair share of vacations as you have seen, because I finished editing this video and I posted this video, I finished editing the video before this and I posted it. Um, I've been on, I've traveled with groups of people. I just recently traveled by myself. I've been traveling for about a decade now, probably a little bit more than that. So I know, I know kind of sort of the ins and outs of traveling. So today I'm going to give my top tips or like the main tips about traveling whether you're traveling with a group whether you're traveling with friends whether you're traveling with family whether you're traveling by yourself th these tips apply regardless we're also just gonna go ahead and get this out the way right now this debate was on i don't know if it was a debate so twitter was having a conversation about all-inclusive resorts versus airbnbs let's go ahead and get this out the way i personally or for that prefer resorts for a multitude of reasons, which we're about to get into right now. I have stayed, have I stayed in a B and B traveling? Yes. Well, technically it was a verbal, but like Airbnb, same type shit. Um I did an Airbnb in Belize. Jamaica was a resort. Aruba was a timeshare, so it's not quite the same. Uh, Greece was multiple hotels, Mexico, Tulum was a resort, Cancun was a resort. So I technically have done both, but I prefer resorts. Here's why. One, at resorts, I don't got to worry about bugs. I don't got to worry about killing no bugs. I don't got to worry about keeping bugs out. I don't got to worry about all of that because the resort takes initiative to handle that. I ain't gotta worry about that. And bugs in foreign countries, if you've been to foreign countries before, you know, if you have not been to foreign countries, <sighs> bugs in other places are wild. And first of all, they're gonna love you because you're not from there and you're foreign to them and they're gonna love you like that. Mosquitoes, it's a whole separate thing. But I'm talking about like bugs, like what, like, <laughs> what we consider roaches, they don't know nothing about roaches. Like, water bugs is is the common roach to them they got all kinds of foreign bugs i'm not here for it i don't gotta deal with it at resorts two i don't gotta worry about cleanliness airbnbs you gotta one you gotta worry about if the owner or like the owner of the property the manager whoever appropriately cleans the resort in terms of the resort appropriately cleans the house uh, cleans the B&B &B in terms of washing the sheets, all that kind of stuff, washing, uh, cleaning bathrooms, all that. 
I'm not worried about that at resorts. I leave my room, I come back to my room, bed is made, everything's clean, new towels is in there, all that kind of stuff. I don't gotta worry about it. You gotta do all that yourself at Airbnbs. I ain't got the time. Three, you have free food and drinks the entire time versus with Airbnbs, not only do you have to pay for the Airbnb, but then every time you go out to eat, you have to pay for that. And people have this thing of like, or like the conversation, some of the reasonings I was seeing on Twitter during the conversation was like, oh, but uh, resorts only have the same selections of food. And like, if I don't like it, then I'm screwed. Da, 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 da. One, to the resorts that I have been in, there's only one restaurant or like buffet or whatever that keeps the same consistent food out of all of the restaurants and that is because so it can be a go-to for the people from all over the world that are coming to the resort so they have a consistent thing but all the other restaurants have other stuff that you can eat in terms of like different flavors different like i just got back from tulum one there was a mediterranean restaurant there was an italian restaurant there was um the mexican restaurant like there's different stuff that you can try and then the buffet the buffet had different stuff every day but I don't understand when people use that reasoning because when you stay in an Airbnb, if you go to a restaurant and you pay for the food, you don't like the food, but you're still hungry, you have to go somewhere else and buy more food. At a resort, I can just leave the restaurant and go sit somewhere else and eat something else. <laughs> like what? Or at the same restaurant, I can just try something else off the menu again for free because I've already paid for everything. So it's like, I'm not paying every single time. And then drinks. There's bars all over every single resort. Like what? You're drinking all day for free instead of paying for every single drink. And especially when people go to Airbnbs, they go to the tourist spots. Tourist spots are already extra pricey. Like what? So I don't understand. I just feel like Airbnbs all around are more expensive because you have to pay for the Airbnb, you have to pay for taxis to go wherever you're going, you have to pay for the food and the drinks and hookah if that's your vibe at every single place you go to every single night. Like, you don't have to do that. You pay one lump sum for the resort, which comes with drinks, food. Like, what? By the time you finish all your restaurants and stuff, you're paid way more than you would have at a resort. But that's just me. Plus, I don't know why people feel like just because you're at a resort that you can't leave and still go to all the same, like, local clubs and restaurants or whatever. You're not stuck on the resort. You can still go out if you want to go out to do that. People were like, oh, but I'm going to feel like because I paid all this money, I have to stay on the resort, like no just because they have themed shows and stuff and like lounges and stuff that you can stay that you can go to on the resort doesn't mean you can't still go off the resort and go wherever you want to go like what say you had a full day of excursions right or partying like you went to a, a day club or whatever when you get back and you want to just lay down or you want to just get in a nice shower that's so much better in a in a resort. Like the real the relaxation and the amenities at a resort are so much better. But at the same time, after making this whole list and like thinking it out, I was like, I guess it kind of depends on your intention for your trip. Because if you want to relax and have like, do you want to relax and have fun, or do you want to primarily explore? the town the country that you're going to because if you want to if your plan is to explore mainly then do an airbnb whatever but like if you're just there to relax and like have fun do a resort save yourself some time do a resort that's tip number one a lot of details but it's tip number one moving on tip number two now we're going to talk about money um Real, real short, real sweet, real to the point. You're going to a foreign country. Get some of the money, some of the currency 
for that country. One, it's kind of like a common courtesy thing. Like, the U U.S. folk have this thing where, like, they feel like everybody else should uh, accommodate to U.S. Like, no, you're going to somebody else's country. You have to do the things that they do in that country. Finished all the tips. Only up to step two or tip two recorded. <laughs> so let's redo. Hiya. Quick interruption. Um, future editing Naori here. Um, I realized I didn't finish what I was saying about money. Long story short, moral of the story because I don't remember what I was saying. Um, get the currency of that country, even if you're just going to Mexico. Like, you're in a different country, they have a different currency. Use their currency. Like, plus, because one, if you actually do go to the like local local places chances are they're not going to take us so you need to have that currency and number two slash more importantly if you care about your money more than likely you're going to end up paying more in us than you would have if you use their currency like mexico if you use pesos you're going to pay the appropriate amount because they'll try to overcharge you even in pesos just so that they can get like an extra tip or whatever. So if you're paying US, like whatever. But if you wanna be nice and like leave tips and stuff in US so that they can have like a little bit of extra money, that's fine. But in terms of like paying for your food or paying for your stuff, use pesos. Use in foreign, in other countries, like on the other side of the world, you don't gotta worry about that because they don't take US, period, end of conversation. But yes, just get the currency of that country don't be an obnoxious american like get the currency for that country plus everybody else has gorgeous currency like america is so ghetto everyone else's currency is super pretty has nice colors it's different colors it's it's just get the currency of that country if you don't want to if you don't spend it all keep it as a souvenir don't use u.s dollars on with the rest of the video now i'm gonna keep it short and sweet Tip three, have a list of things you want to do or places that you want to go, but don't have a particular itinerary. Like, know that you want to go to these restaurants, these day clubs, shop here, but don't say, okay, I'm going shopping Tuesday, Wednesday, we're going to go to this club, Thursday, we're going to go to this day, cl day club, Friday, we're going to go to this lounge at this time, blah, blah, blah. It's going to cause, it's going to ruin gonna alter your mood that day if like you're running late if you're on a group trip and like or people are taking too long people don't want to go blah, blah 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 like just day to day see how you feel except for if you have excursions booked then kind of by default you have an itinerary per se but other than that like even with excursions the other days just see how you feel when you wake up that day you wake up and you want to go shopping go shopping that day you wake up and you want to go out, you want to go to a beach club, you want to go to a restaurant that night, blah, blah, blah. Take it day by day. It keeps your mood intact during vacation. Number four, be aware of your surroundings. I don't know if I do this because I'm from New York. Like, I do this when I'm commuting somewhere. Like, you just got to be aware of your surroundings. Um, regardless of if you're on a resort or if you are staying at an Airbnb. You just need to be aware because... The workers well, at the restaurants or the workers on the resort and the locals, like just other people, if you're just out and about, yes, a lot of the time they will be trying to just flirt with you and get at you and blah, 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 one, because they probably think you have money. But for that reason, like, yeah, they're flirting, but like, they're also low key plotting on you. Like, don't get caught up. And to extend from that, don't give out too many details about your trip. Don't give out um, how, particularly how long you're staying. Like, don't give out any details about where you're staying, uh, how many people you're with. Like, just be real particular about the details that you give out. Don't don't be like, okay, we'll be here, here, and here at this time. Like, but we're staying here now. When you're out, <laughs> one, they'll have a group of people ready to rob you when you leave. And while you're there, people are robbing your location. Like, just don't give out too many details. Tip number five, do research about wherever you are going. 
um, particularly me and my family and the people that I travel with, uh, when we're going somewhere, we watch a lot of YouTube videos. We watch um, people's do's and don'ts videos about that country. We learn through those videos we learn which places are lit which places are expensive which places are worth it um it's just just do your research and also along with that try the local foods like it's again same thing with the money like don't expect to have american food for my u.s folk don't expect to have american food if you're in the middle east like it's like when in Rome you know like in Greece uh they have the I forget what it's called they have this like fried cheese thing tried it it was great when I was in Greece I fell in love with moussaka tried that in Greece for the first time their uh tzatziki super great um those are all good examples but like a bad example that we figured out through research uh for Belize in Belize they eat this they eat a rat uh, I forget also what it's called, but uh, we figured that out through research because obviously the, their name for it is not rat, it's something else. So you would have been eating a rat and not even known. Huh, do your research. Like just try the local food to do research, see where you should go, where you shouldn't go, things you should do, things you shouldn't do. If you're crossing the street here in America, like, or if you're jaywalking something and a car stops to let you go, like you'll wave at them for to show like appreciation and say thank you or whatever. In Greece, that's taken as an insult. Like you can't raise your hand to them. So do research for small things like that. So you don't get into any issues while you're in a foreign country. Do your research. Next tip, use a travel agent. That kind of sounds intimidating. It kind of sounds like, I don't know if it sounds bougie or whatever, but like it just makes the process so much easier. You don't have to worry about all the small details. All you have to worry about is having your money on the day that you are supposed to have it because all they got to do is click a button. The, the appropriate people will charge your card and that's it. Um, you don't got to worry about all the small details. They find you the good deals on the resorts and the price that they the total price that they tell you will include flights so for example i paid for tulum um i think a little over 1500 maybe like 1550 1580 something like that and that was for my all-inclusive resort that i was at for eight days seven nights and my round trip non-stop flights all for plus travel insurance for like 1580 you can pay fifteen hundred dollars for the airbnb stay alone if you <laughs> one book by yourself to book or uh, airbnb but whatever just book a travel use a travel agent it saves a lot of time it saves you a lot of hassle but yes in the description i will leave the information for the travel agent that i use she's great she like cruises boat cruises international travel car rentals whatever you need whatever you want she got you. Check her out. Oh, final tip. Most important, maybe not most important, but for my US folk, if you've traveled internationally before, you know what customs is like. You know the hassle of customs, especially when you're coming back. You're coming back from your long trip. You had a good time. One, you're sad because you're back and you're not on vacation anymore. Two, you're tired. You want to get in your bed. You want to have a nice shower. Like, you just want to get home, but you got to wait 45 minutes, an hour and a half on during COVID, surrounded by other people to get through customs. Like, you don't want that hassle. So, download the mobile passport app. It is the holy grail. My first time using mobile passport was just coming back from Tulum. And like I said, I've been traveling for over 10 years now. It just, it saves so much time. You get your own separate line for customs. You, um, like when your flight lands, you put in all your passport information in the app, you submit it. Um, they'll give you a, like a barcode. Once you get to your customs line, your separate customs line, which is always a lot shorter. Um, 
They scan your little barcode, they check your passport, bam, you're on to get your bag and you're out. Gotta go. While everybody else is standing on the super long line, walking back and forth a thousand times to do the same thing that you just did. Like, just save yourself some time. Download the Mold Passport app so you can get home and get in your shower and get in your bed and prepare to continue your regular be scheduled programming. <laughs> oh, and this is another thing, but that is dealing with customs upon return, but dealing with um, TSA leaving out, if you don't feel like paying for TSA pre-check, which is also, it's the same customs process, but also a lot faster and you like, you pay for it uh, every year so that like they know who you are and you can just fly through that process. You get certain perks, like you don't have to take your shoes off and some other stuff, I don't know. Um, but if you don't want to do that, Clear, there's this program, company, whatever, called Clear, who kind of sort of does the same thing. We had just got that in April when we went to Belize, but I used it for Tulum. And again, I got to go right to the front of the line, skip past hella people who was waiting online for God knows how long, and I just came right up, hopped in front of the line, and went on through about my day. It just, it's, it's things like that, it just shortens the process, you get through a lot faster, just save yourself the time, save yourself the hassle. Mobile passport app, for sure. But if you don't want to pay for TSA pre-check or clear, that's your business, whatever. Just get to the airport with enough time to get through customs. But yes, those are all my tips. Um, hopefully you try some of these tips out to see how much better it makes your trip. I don't know. I don't know. Just follow these tips. I hope you have a smooth vacation. Hope you enjoy your travels. Um, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. All that good thing, all those good things. I no longer have time to edit, so I'm just going to get back to work. That's it. Bye.